Well, I guess this is what might be called my resignation as soon as you've got someone else. Now listen to me, Maggie. We've been together for a long time. You were indispensable to me, but I think I am unselfish enough not to let that stand in the way where your happiness is concerned, because whether you know it or not, I have a deep affection for you. I know that, Sherry. That being the case, I will not stand by and allow you to make a fool of yourself. I'm not, Sherry. You are, my dear. You are behaving like Tilly the toiler. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. I cannot believe that a girl who, for the past 10 years, has had the great of the world served up on a platter before her. I cannot believe that it is anything but a kind of temporary insanity when you are swept off your feet in seven days by a second-rate small-town newspaper man. Sherry, I can't explain how it's happened. I can only tell you that it's so. It's hard for me to believe, too, Sherry. Here I am, a hard-bitten old cynic, behaving like True Story magazine and liking it, discovering the moon and ice skating. <laughs> I keep laughing to myself all the time, but there it is. What can I do about it, Sherry? I'm in love. We're leaving here tomorrow, hip or no hip. We're leaving here tomorrow. <laughs> Of the other one. Get me a train schedule and start packing. I'll pull you out of this, Miss Stardust. I'll get the ants out of those moonlit pants. <laughs> it's no good, Sherry. I would be back on the next Streamline train. It's completely unbelievable. Can you see yourself? The wife of the editor of the Massalia Journal. <laughs> Having an evening at home for Mr. and Mrs. Stanley. Mr. and Mrs. Poop face. <laughs> and the members of the Book of the Month Club. Sherry, I've had ten years of the great figures of our time, and don't think I'm not grateful to you for it. I've loved every minute of it. They've been wonderful years, gay and stimulating. Why, I don't think anyone's ever had the fun we've had, but a girl can't laugh all the time, Sherry. There comes a time when she wants Bert Jefferson. <laughs> Oh, you don't know Bert, Sherry. He's gentle and he's unassuming and... Well, I love him, that's all. I see. Well, I remain completely unconvinced. You are drugging yourself into this Joan Crawford fantasy. <laughs> And before you become completely anesthetized, I shall do everything in my power to bring you to your senses. Now, you listen to me, Whiteside. I know you. Lay off. I know what a devil you can be. I've seen you do it to other people, but don't you dare do it to me. Don't drug yourself into the idea that all you're thinking of is my happiness. You're thinking of yourself a little bit, too, and all those months of breaking in somebody new. I've seen you in a passion before when your life has been disrupted, and you couldn't dine in Calcutta on July 12th with Boo Boo. Well, that's too bad, but there it is. I am going to marry Bert, if he'll have me. And don't you dare try any of your tricks. I'm on to every one of them, so lay off! <laughs> That's my message to you, big Lord Fauntleroy. 